Welcome to a Think Energy Short, hosted by me, Trevor Freeman. This is a bite-sized episode designed to be a quick summary of a specific topic or idea related to the world of energy. This is meant to round out our collective understanding of the energy sector and will complement our normal guest interview episodes. Thanks for joining and happy listening. Hey everyone, and welcome back. As you heard in the intro, this is a Think Energy short, so it'll just be me diving into a certain topic that helps round out our understanding of the energy world. Today, we're talking about something that we've all experienced or has affected us in one way or another at some point, power outages. So a power outage is never fun. Nobody wants to go through that. But as we increasingly electrify our lives, they become more and more impactful. When our mode of transportation and our method of heating and cooling our homes relies on electricity, we want that power back as soon as possible. Today, we're going to look at how utilities like Hydro Ottawa manage outages from prevention to repairs so that we get power back on as soon as possible. Now, here in Ottawa, we all know how unpredictable the weather can be. One minute it's a blizzard, the next it's sunny and 15 degrees outside or vice versa. And over the past few years, we've seen it all. From wild windstorms, everybody remembers the derecho, tornadoes, ice storms, floods, we've kind of run the gamut of weather. And that's going to continue. As climate change changes our global weather patterns, we're going to see more and more extreme weather. So this is a topic that's not going anywhere. It's also not just Mother Nature that's throwing us curveballs. Sometimes it's a squirrel or another animal that's, you know, causing mischief on our power lines or a car that takes out a hydro pole or just equipment reaching the end of its life. Whatever the cause, when the power goes out, all we want to know is one thing. When will it be back on? So today we'll go behind the scenes a little bit and see how we tackle outages from start to finish. We'll look at the strategies that we use to prevent outages, the priorities that we follow during a storm, and the lessons learned to improve the grid for the future. So let's dive in. The first topic is prevention. Now, we can't predict all outages. For example, if it's animal interference or a car accident, we can't predict that. But... For weather-related outages, you might be surprised to know that Hydro Ottawa has a team monitoring the weather 24-7. They're kind of like our weather detectives, and they look at forecasts and try to predict potential impacts to the grid related to weather. Even when the skies are clear, however, our crews are working hard to prepare ourselves for things like inclement weather. They're out there inspecting lines, trimming trees, and upgrading equipment. Think of it as giving our entire electrical system a regular health checkup. Speaking of health checkups, trees are a major culprit when it comes to outages, especially here in the Ottawa Valley where we have so many trees and a lot of forested and wooded areas, which is great. It's why we love this area, but that can interfere with our power lines. So Hydro Ottawa has a team of dedicated arborists who work year-round to keep branches trimmed and clear of power lines. But sometimes there is a storm on the horizon, and that's when things kick into high gear. Our crews are put on standby. We alert our customers through email and text and social media in order to be as prepared as possible and let us respond quickly when an outage does happen. So... During the storm, when the storm hits and the power goes out, what happens then? Well, restoring power isn't as simple as just flipping a switch. Hydro Ottawa follows a carefully structured plan to ensure safety and that we get the lights back on as quickly as possible. Let's take the example of a major storm that has caused widespread outages across our service territory. Our first job is to investigate the extent of the damage and understand what's actually happened. Where is there damage on our system? Now, when it comes to restoration, safety is our number one priority. So we want to address any hazards like down power lines immediately, as soon as we find out about them. And that's both for the safety of the public and the safety of our crews. Now, our crews may be out there even while the storm is still going on. So safety is absolutely paramount and we ensure that they work safely. The next focus of ours would be critical infrastructure. So this is things like our own substations and main power lines, the real backbone of our system that provides power to the rest of the city. 
And then we look at the essential services. So these would be things like hospitals, water treatment plants, things that our emergency responders need. We then move on to widespread outages. So our goal is to bring customers back on as soon as possible. And we look for those areas where we can get the largest number of customers back on the quickest. After that, we would move to smaller neighborhoods and smaller clusters, those pockets of outages where there are less customers impacted. And finally, we move on to individual homes and businesses that might be out. Now, it's important to note here that if those homes and businesses have sustained damage to their own electrical equipment, so something that is customer owned, that may need to be addressed before we're able to restore power. And the customer needs to work with a licensed electrician to make those repairs before we can turn the power back on. But the good news is, is we will work with the customer and help them understand what's required on their side in order for us to restore power safely. Again, I can't stress this enough. We want to make sure we do everything as safe as possible for the customers and for our crews. Throughout this entire process, communication is absolutely critical. So we want to be communicating with our customers about what's happening on the grid, hopefully giving some insight into when they might expect the power to be back on. To do this, we use outage maps on our website and on our app, text alerts, and social media in order to communicate. Now, it's important to know here that we provide initial restoration times, but those may change once our crew gets on the site and assesses the damage or as a project progresses and we understand what's required to get that power back on. So sometimes restoration times can change and they are dependent on a number of different factors. It can be weather conditions, the location of the outage, how severe the damage is, and what other outages are happening on the grid. During an outage, it's important that you as the customer also stay safe. So in the winter, stay in your home as long as it's safe and warm and you have food and water. The city during widespread outages or if an emergency is declared may open emergency warming centers or cooling centers during the summer months. And you can get more information on that by listening to local broadcasts, by looking at city resources and also checking out Hydro Ottawa resources. One thing I can say is that during a storm and while there's a power outage, our crews will be at work 24-7 until power is restored to every customer. Okay, so the storm is over and the power is restored, so the work stops there, right? Wrong. After every storm, we look for lessons learned to improve our response and improve the grid's resiliency. So we look at outage data, response times, the repair efforts to really refine our strategies and determine where improvements can be made. One question that we often get, especially after storms, is why not just put all the power lines underground to prevent storm-related outages? While that may sound like a great idea, the reality is that underground systems are significantly more expensive, sometimes up to 11 times the cost of overhead lines. So undergrounding may work in some cases. It's definitely not a one-size-fits-all fix. The last section to talk about is how to be prepared. Power outages, unfortunately, will happen. We can't be 100% sure that we can prevent them. So how can you make sure you're prepared? Well, the Canadian Red Cross recommends having an emergency kit ready with enough supplies to be self-sufficient for at least 72 hours. Think about things like Food, water, medications, flashlights, a battery-powered radio, anything you might need to be self-sufficient for that 72-hour period. There are lots more tips that you can find on this on Hydro Ottawa's website, so have a look. That wraps up today's episode. We've covered a number of different things from before a storm to after a storm and continuous improvement. Just remember that you can stay informed by visiting Hydro Ottawa's outage map on our website or on our mobile app. You can follow us on social media and make sure you sign up for outage alerts. Thanks for tuning in to a Think Energy Short and join us next time for another guest interview. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Think Energy podcast. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and it would be great if you could leave us a review. It really helps to spread the word. As always, we would love to hear from you, whether it's feedback, comments, or an idea for a show or a guest. You can always reach us at thinkenergy at hydroottawa.com.